It's very early. It's 5.07 a.m. to be precise at the moment, which is why it's like, oh, dark 30. And we are going to a very, very special place. And this is a place that has literally been on our travel bucket list for a long time. So you're definitely going to want to come along for this one because there's some tricks of the trade that you need to know if you want to go just why this took a lot of advanced planning and it's been on the bucket list for a while because <laughs> you've got to know some things before you go so we'll be sharing about those tips later on but gotta leave here at 5 30 so we can get there by 7 to get on the boat but i'm excited for what today has One, two, three, four. so typical key west with the rooster everywhere. So we're here, we're in the parking garage, and then we're going to go get on the boat to go to someplace super special. But first we need to go over A for parking and then get down. See, there he is again. <laughs> get down to where the boat is. But we got all of our snorkel gear. I think we're booted and suited. Did you lock the Jeep? Uh, not yet. All right. I will here and walk then let's go and walk over there. Go to the bathroom, get on the boat. Yes, I need to pee. All right, are you excited, little miss? Oh, I can tell the excitement. What about you? Oh, you are you look excited too. Really? <laughs> Let's just do 12. Oh. All right, so I got our boarding passes. We are ready to go to Dry Tortuga National Park. She said that orientation starts in five minutes, so I guess we'll go have a seat and then find out what to expect, but this is going to be a fun day. How are you? Good. Thank you, sir. Thank you, dear. After we boarded the boat, we were served a light breakfast and given some basic instructions for the two hour ride to Dry Tortugas. Once we could no longer see any land, I know how avid sailors must feel being surrounded by just the vast ocean. It's both scary and amazing all at the same time. Since we woke up early, the final part of the boat ride was the perfect time to get in a quick nap, being lulled to sleep by the rocking of the boat on the water. Once the fort came into view, it was an amazing feeling knowing we reached our destination, but it was also awe-inspiring seeing this amazing structure surrounded by water in what felt like the middle of nowhere. So welcome to Fort Jefferson National Park. This is one of the more remote national parks that is part of the national park system. We are 70 miles off the coast of Florida right now. So it was a two and a half hour ferry ride to get out here to Fort Jefferson in the Dry Tortugas. So if you want to go, a few things that you need to know, and that is you have to book out well in advance. And depending upon the time of the year, well, three to four months in advance, in some cases, I booked our particular trip about two months in advance of when we were going to be here. So I'll put a link in the description below for the website to book the ferry that comes out here. The other way to get out here would be via seaplane. Now, 
that is about twice the cost of the ferry. So with a family of four, we opted for the ferry ride instead. But this is an amazing national park and you definitely need to put this on your bucket list, especially if you're a travel family or just somebody that wants to be able to see all of these types of wonders. This is the third largest sea fort structure <laughs> that's ever been built in the United States. So it's definitely something that you want to come see. Dates way back to the 1800s, lots of cool history here, um, but obviously not an active fort anymore. And they did abandon construction of it just because it was a logistical nightmare is the long story short. It's very remote. It's hard to get people. It was hard to get materials. It was hard to get food. It was hard to get all of that out here. And then of course, as times evolved and technology evolved, well, you really didn't need it as an actual fort as far as being able to guard the Gulf of Mexico waters anymore. But it's a beautiful area to come visit. And there's some great snorkeling here that we're gonna be checking out here soon too. So if you come, you definitely wanna plan on getting in the water. What'd you get there? Oh. Hermit crab. Hermit crab. Yeah, I found it. Oh, he declared just let him be. Put him back. Dry Tartugas is my new favorite national park. I love the amazing snorkeling that this place has to offer. We saw a lot of fish and plant life. <laughs> As we got closer to the moat walls, there was a lot more sea life to look at. The water was so clear and warm. If you visit this national park, make sure to grab a mask, fins, and a snorkel and swim around to see all of the amazing things under the water. I blew my nose and my mask on accident. Because I was trying to do a flip. Uh, and I, blew my I breathed out of my nose. So behind me here is a boat that actually washed ashore onto Loggerhead Key in 2007. Now, Loggerhead Key is one of the many keys or islands that make up Dry Tortugas. So here where Fort Jefferson sits, this is actually considered Garden Key, but there's a lot of keys or islands that make up this whole particular area. So this boat washed up on Loggerhead Key with some Cuban immigrants that were aboard that were wanting to come to the United States. And because there was a law that was passed in the 90s that basically said if you have one foot on dry land that you could essentially immigrate into America. So Florida and the Keys and the Dry Tortugas have actually been an area where there's been a lot of Cuban immigration because we're not that far from Cuba where we are right here in the Dry Tortugas. This is really super cool. There are these staircases. Now there's five of them here at Fort Jefferson that you can go up to the top. Now, this fort is very, very old. It was built before a lot of things like OSHA and those types of things. So it's one of those things where you've got to be careful. There are no guardrails. There is really nothing to protect you from your own stupidity, if that's what you choose to call it. So. But you can come up here and oh my gosh, the views, amazing. I went to the bakery, which is in one of the um, bastions over there. I did some of my Junior Ranger book and <laughs> one of the parts, it's like a letter. It says, imagine yourself stationed at Fort Jefferson in 1864. How would you describe life at the fort? One of the things I looked over there and it said one of the prisoners, which is actually um, Lincoln's assassin who was here, he said it, the bread was a mixture of flour, bugs, sticks, and dirt. <laughs> so, yeah, and then I was listening a little bit to the guided tour because they were over there by the chimney thing. And they said that they would shoot red hot cannonballs out of that thing and try to skip them across the water because they're so hot that it would boil and they can bounce on it cloud of steam the whole way wow, and cool. they don't want to they only had like half a thing of powder 
so that they would stick it in the middle of the boats, like where the gunpowder in the boats were, so then they could just blow up the boats, basically. Instead of shooting the cannonball through the boats, they make it get stuck in the middle so that it blows it up. That's interesting. Cool. So lunch is part of the ferry out here. So we've got lunch. We can take out on the island and uh, we'll get some chips and just have a nice picnic lunch. After spending about four hours of exploring the fort and snorkeling, it was time to head back to Key West. It was an amazing sunset cruise and they promised to have us back in time to enjoy Key West evening festivities. we couldn't I couldn't keep any of the conch shells that I found I know they I were found one and then I grabbed it and it was like a weight I know they were beautiful yeah they were they were huge because we really wanted to take them but it's a national park so you're not allowed to yeah so we entered a raffle which is basically in on the dry tortuga oh first match we do indeed have a winner today Woo! today is our winner so you get to pick any of this stuff you can have playing cards or underwater cameras you can get a hat you can have a shirt, a fluffy towel, whatever makes you happy. Go ahead and pick it out, and that is yours. We got the winning number, so I got a dry tortuga shirt. Turn around, let me see. Oh, what does it say? Oh, that's so cool. I love it. Sweet. So that was They'll fun. keep you from getting sunburned, too. Yeah, it's a nice long swim shirt. Yeah, love it. Looks good on you. So the boat got back about 5.30, so we decided to come down into Key West because we love this place. And there's two places in particular that we really always want to go to when we come here. Number one, Ranjan Surf Shop. So first stop, and then Kermit's Key Lime Pie. We got the best Key Lime Pie, but first Ranjan. You looking for another shirt? You just got a shirt. She's got this is the clearance rack. Ah. You're always looking at the clearance bucks. rack. That's well, actually not bad. Yeah, actually. What is that? Surfing pig. Hmm. Is she trying to schmooge you out of another shirt? She is. She really got a shirt and she wants another one. But, you know, it's Ranjan, so. You gotta. Can you blame her? Yeah. I can't blame her. I'm gonna get this shirt. Okay. Florida. Oh, I love it. Florida. Mm -hmm. All right, let's go All check right, out. Let's go check out. And then get our key lime pie. So stop number two, two. Kermit's key lime. Ah. Right here. Here oh. we go. Let's go. Let's get some key lime pie. Key lime pie. All right, you get some candy. 10-ish. This sugar-free candy will last me a lifetime. Really? A lifetime. Okay, what lifetime is it? Lifetime supply. Right here. A little bag of candy. Yeah. So Tim and Melinda with Faith Family and a Fifth Wheel have been super gracious with letting Alaska out today while we've been out. So I wanted to get them some coffee. So we're going to stop in at Cuban Queen and I'm going to bring them back a bag of coffee. It's just a thanks for helping out with the dog. You guys are silly. Look at the sign behind you. What? This is my happy face. So we just got home from Dry Tortugas National Park and 
course, I'm exhausted. But it was a really fun day. We snorkeled, explored the fort, and we got to learn some information about the fort as well. And we had four hours of long boat ride. Two hours there, two hours back. And then we hung out in Key West for a little bit. And I had a lot of fun. Oh my. <laughs> I think if they gave an award for the messiest campsite, we would totally win that one this morning. Yes. My gosh. Look at this. And I actually have already put away a couple of things. I don't know. We had an eventful time here. We did. It was at the Fiesta. Best. Oh my gosh. It was the best. And I'm glad that we have all of this because that meant we had extra for friends. So that's always fun when you can bring friends along. But now today is travel day. We have to be checked out in a couple hours if we have all of this. Nail biter. What's gonna happen? Are we gonna make it? <laughs> Come back to the Florida Keys. You're in my seat, Val. I am? You can't sit there. I can't. You can't sit there. Come on. Move. Okay. So our time here in the Keys has sadly come to an end. Something that we took away from this week that we highly recommend for everybody is travel in community. So we actually shared with our insiders where we were gonna be and we had some insiders join us here in the Keys. So if you'd like to become a Grateful Glamper insider, I'll have a link in the description below. We do share where we're going, trip plans, things like that, because we would love to hang out with more of you guys. Thank you.